This episode has been a strategic people's production sponsored by Samaj Music Group, all rights reserved, 2018. Thanks for tuning in to One Lafayette Radio Music Station podcast, representing the 337, the flatlands of Lafayette, Louisiana. It's your girl, Slay Marie. And Daisha Nicole. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell for notifications for our up-and-coming shows and to catch up on past episodes on the One Life Yet Radio Music Station. Today's highlights are our topic of the day, how to trust in a new relationship, what's trending 337 with Daisha Nicole, quote of the day, best selfie of the day, tip of the day, social hustlers of the week, and social posts of the week. How you doing today, boo? I'm doing fantastic. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. I'm doing well as well. Um, I can't wait to get into today's topic. Well, before we jump into today's topic, any artist who's looking for exclusive custom beats from one of Lafayette's own music productions teams, teams, <laughs> strategic peoples be sure to get with them they have a deal going on right now where you can design your own custom beats for only 30 dollars limited beat sessions available so dm us or strategic peoples for more details you can find them on facebook instagram and youtube we're gonna jump right into today's topic and today's topic is how to trust in a new relationship. Well, well, well. What do we have here? What do we <laughs> have? <laughs> How to trust in a new relationship. That's a hard one for, uh, I know a lot of people. Well, for me, I'll speak for myself. It was a super, super hard one for me. But I'll let you kick us off today. Well, <laughs> I think... In order to trust in a new relationship, whether it's personal or business, you got to get rid of that baggage. You got to leave it to the door. Wait, mm -hmm. no, not to the door. Throw it out. <laughs> Don't even bring it. Don't even think about bringing it. Just you have to give the person that you're going to be dealing with a fair chance. I believe everybody needs a fair chance. I don't think nobody should be penalized for your path. Right. So with that being said, you're going to have to be a little vulnerable. Now, that may be hard for some. Because mm -hmm. being vulnerable, I know for me, child, I feel like that's a setup. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, you know... Anything can happen. I can get hurt. I don't want to get hurt. Right. So I think that's scary. I think it's scary for um anybody. But that's the key. You have to be you have to be vulnerable and you have to unpack. You have to unpack those bags. Sometimes those bags consist of low self-esteem, mm -hmm. doubt, fear, et cetera, et cetera. Most definitely. I'm being silly today. <laughs> But um, yeah. In order to in order to have a successful relationship, we have to knock down those walls. Mm hmm. Those emotional walls. Yeah, we're we're so guarded. Um, a lot of times with our feelings that we block a lot, and I think it's a good thing and a bad thing. But you don't want to miss out on a chance of something beautiful because of a um such a negative past so I would say starting a new relationship try to be vulnerable it's hard but try your best mm -hmm. that's all I have to say I'm gonna let Lane <laughs> take y'all down a dark road no I'm joking <laughs> no it's the truth <laughs> well y'all I'm gonna tell y'all a piece of my story you have to get the backstory to understand it. But if I never understood what I have now in my current relationship and made a change, I wouldn't be in the loving relationship I am today. To have trust in a new relationship is very hard, you know, especially when you're the one that was burnt, so to speak, in the previous relationship. 
You want with everything in you to put your total trust in the new person and live in absolute bliss with no worries. (laughs) Unfortunately, that's better said than done, you know, especially when you are a broken individual and not known it. And on the flip side of things, being in a bad relationship was actually a blessing in disguise for me because it made me recognize and be aware of what a great relationship felt like and looked like. But accepting all the good was hard. In one of my past relationships, um, before I met my husband, me and this one guy was off and on for about four and a half years. And this relationship had me full of anger and rage, jealousy, low self-esteem, distrust, lack of faith in what love was, and self-doubt. Um, I didn't realize how broken I was until I met Broderick because his love for me um, exposed all the bad things I just mentioned. And when those things were exposed to me, I felt like something wasn't right with our situation because I was so used to being mistreated emotionally, mentally, and psychologically. The person I was with would use the fact that I was naive and inexperienced with life in general as a tool so to speak, to have power over me because he was older than I was and thought I would never grow up. You know, he would call me his little juvie. Mm. (laughs) And being naive, I thought that was cute. (laughs) But I was being hella dumb, you know. (laughs) (laughs) You know, he would use words like, I love you. You know, you're for me. You're never going anywhere. That's the one you You see when they say you for me, go. (laughs) Okay. No matter (laughs) who you're with, you're always going to be for me. And he would shower me with gifts and make me feel like I was the only one when we were together. And for a long time, I believed the lies, you know. I would get tired of it, then I would leave him and date someone else. And once me and that person was over, I'll go right back to him and, of course, prove him right over and over again. Mm. He would do his thing and I would accept it. And his excuses was, you're not 18 yet, you know. Um, Once you get of age, we can finally be together. So I would accept his lies and excuses. And, you know, once my parents found out about him, of course, they were furious. But I would keep his identity a secret. You know, I would protect him. So he was older? Yes, he was older. Don't ask me the age because I'm shamed. (laughs) I thought he was cute back then, but, you know, I was shamed. (laughs) I'm going to tell you after the show. All right, all right. (laughs) Um, You know, so I kept his his identity a secret. So it was nothing that they could do to stop me from seeing him. And I just knew with everything in me that we would be happy and the only thing was holding us back was time. So fast forward the tape and I turned 18. Well, guess what? The lies never stopped. New lies started. Mm. And at that point in time, I'm thinking to myself, this will never be ending. Like, it's never ending. I deserve so much more. You know, my mother didn't raise no fool and all that's playing in my mind. But I'm also thinking the time I put into the relationship and, you know, the love I have for him. And, of course, I want to see if what he was saying is going to come into fruition. Like, I couldn't just leave and not know, you know. So at this point in time, my parents found out who he really was and they hated his guts. And because they seen the pet I was on and it wasn't a good one. Well, about a year passed, and right before my birthday, I showed up to his apartment, and we were talking about moving in together. Girl, I thought she was going to say that a girl was there. No. No. (laughs) Okay. Well, through the midst of the the conversation, he drops a bomb on me, and he shows me a picture of a little girl. And she was a few months old, and he says, do you know who this is? Like, I'm supposed to know, Mm. you know? And I said, no. So he says, do you remember when we were on our break Mm. a few months ago? Well, I found out that this is my baby. And it was no denying it because she looked just like him and his other kids. Mm. So at that point, my stomach turned. You know, I immediately felt disgusted. One tear rolled down the left side of my cheek. It was like a movie. Mm, I I was just going to say (laughs) that, too. And, girl, I kissed him for the last time. Goodbye. And I told him I was done. You know what that sucker did? He looked at me and he laughed. (gasps) And he said, now 
I'm going to give y'all a nice version of what he said because it wasn't what he said. What am I no, to tell girl, y'all? No, we want the uncut. No, I can't give y'all the uncut. <laughs> well, just say bleep, beep, we're going to get he it out. Said, <laughs> he said, that bleep is always going to be for me. That bleep and that bleep always going to be for me. And you ain't going nowhere. I don't care who you with. Mm. So, that point on, there was nothing he could have said or done to ever pull me back because I knew I was I was done with him. I was really done. And after he told me that in laugh, I was just like, how dare you just make a mockery yes. of my feelings and you think that this is cute. Girl, he thought he had so to. now I had to prove him wrong. So, um, but I knew like the better part of me, who I really was. Mm-hmm. I was never going back at that point. He was joking and laughing about it, but I wasn't. I was I was serious. So at that point, everything my parents said and what I knew the truth to be was sinking in, like, at that moment. The following month, my dad passed away, and oh. he tried to, of course, use that as a way to come back into my life, but I wasn't trying to hear that. And he tried, y'all. I, I stopped answering his calls. He would show up at my job. He would call and talk to the managers and see when I was coming in. He would leave notes on my car and all that. But I was over it. The following month, I met the love of my life. Uh Uh-oh. That's my cousin. (laughs) Man, I experienced feelings for him instantly that I had never felt with anyone else. Uh, That was them eyes, I think. Uh, Probably so. (laughs) For anyone who doesn't believe in love at first sight, y'all, it does exist. I was a non-believer until it happened to me. That's how. So hold on, 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 (laughs) hold on. You saying that that was love at first sight? That was. Let me tell you. Really. The feelings I had for him, I had never ever witnessed or felt any of that in my life. Like. I knew beyond, like, without even talking to him. Like, I swear, like, I had the biggest crush on him for, like, the longest time before we even spoke a word to each other. Mm -hmm. And, like, when I would see him, my palms would get sweaty, my (laughs) ears would get hot. Girl, I would have sweat on the top of my nose. My stomach would, like, have butterflies, and I would immediately feel embarrassed. Because I felt like he knew what I was feeling. Yes. <laughs> I used oh. to be ashamed to go get my food, y'all. We was working at Walmart together, and I was a cashier, and he was working in the deli. Hey, deli boy. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to be ashamed to go get my food because I felt like he knew all those feelings. What he was doing? Let me find out cuz was winking in girl, there. Girl, he wasn't doing nothing. Like, I, <laughs> girl, I didn't even want to pick up my head to look at him in the face. I didn't even know his name. Like, I just keep my head down, like, I swear, like a little child, you know, (laughs) scared to ask for something from their parents. Oh, my God. Yeah, and so that's how I knew. And so... um, Girl, look, I'm getting y'all off the story. Yeah, but I'm not going to go into details how we met. That's like another show. (laughs) It's long, long, long. Um, But I will say all the baggage of feelings that I experienced in my past relationship, I did carry into our relationship, unfortunately. And he would always tell me, you know, stop treating me like the past, those other guys, you know, that isn't who I am. And even though I knew that to be 100% true, it was hard for me not to treat him like that because that's what I was used to doing and I was used to the bad. So I was expecting bad, you know. Mm -hmm. Y'all, when I tell y'all I was mentally screwed up, it was bad. I would have dreams of him doing something wrong. And make that a part of our real life. Oh, wow. Like, I wouldn't talk to him for days. I'd be upset. I'd have an attitude for nothing. Like, at the beginning, like, it wasn't good. Like, I was tripped out because of that. And, um, but thank God, y'all. BJ had patience, y'all. He understood my past, you know. We both had a past, you know. Uh, he had a similar relationship to mine that left him broken, too. So we were both broken. But the crazy part about it is uh, we were able to help each other heal from our past by talking and being honest with one another. When we felt those old feelings trying to prevail in our life that had nothing to do with the two of us together, y'all, it may sound cliche, but communication and honesty with our feelings 
were and still is the key to our relationship today. Mm. Honesty and commu- you write about that. Honesty and communication. Mm-hmm. I tell him when I'm happy, when I'm sad, when I'm disappointed, or if I didn't like something. Um, I believe that was the recipe to help me gain trust again. And of course, his words has never felt his actions. Like if he, whatever he told me, he proved it to me with his actions. Mm-hmm. He just didn't say empty things, and you know I didn't feel that. Like that's key too. Like you have to mean what you say, say what you mean, and right. show it. And fourteen and a half years married, we're still loving and growing one another. You know, I encourage anyone who is in a healthy, loving relationship dealing with trust issues from a past relationship to be totally honest with your partner about your feelings and insecurities, because that'll be the only way you can truly heal and your partner can understand where you're coming from. To put your heart on the line is a scary thing because there's a 50 percent chance that your heart will get broken again. But it's also the chance you have to take to find love. And for us, our love language is music. And at the beginning of us, I was blaming him for the bad apple, so to speak. So what he did was he wrote me a song to get me to listen and understand and feel where he was coming from and how he viewed us. So if talking is not your thing, maybe write a song, maybe write a poem, a letter, or record a video to get your partner to truly understand you and what your needs are. You know, I go listen to that song, and each time I hear that song, even until this day, I grow closer to him. And it makes me realize even more what we have together. So to to my past relationship, you know who you are. (laughs) If you're listening, thank you. Because without you, I wouldn't have recognized the love of my life. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. What's his name? Give me his name so I can go. No, I'm joking. Hell no. <laughs> I'm joking. I'll tell you after this. <laughs> well, oh, that's man. the end of this segment. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope we inspired some people. Coming up next, we have 337 What's Trending with Daisha Nicole. But before we do that, we're going to take a quick music break. We have the song that my hubby wrote for me years ago. From SB King James. And he's being cheesy in here, (laughs) y'all. Y'all can't see that part, though. It's called Take Our Time. Y'all, it helped me heal. So stay tuned.
We're back. I hope y'all enjoyed that cut, y'all, that my sweetie um wrote and made for me um years ago. Now it's time for 337 What's Trending with Daisha Nicole. What yeah. you have for us today, girl? Well, what's trending? Video games <laughs> <laughs> and phones. Yes. Video games and phones. The video games and the cell phones are taking up our kids' time. Let's not just say video games. Let's say Fortnite in particular. Girl, yes. Oh, my God. The yes, new phenomenon. Yes, yes. <laughs> And the phones, too. The, they can't go nowhere without them. Right, like they, right. Like they got a meeting, a, a conference call or something. A big business that they handle. Girl. <sighs> but, Even um, my baby, five years old, well, soon to be five, wants my phone all the time. <laughs> Corey. Yes, making YouTube videos that she don't finish. <laughs> Girl. But um that's that's what's trending. Um I know for me, I'm gonna try to at least remove the video games and the phones mm-hmm. during school. Here's I'm, what I'm, I'm taking doing them. this school year, and we did it a little bit um last school year, but we never really, you know forced it a lot but this school year for sure is going down because over the summer i analyzed a lot with the video game like Mm -hmm. those kids don't remember anything right like i can tell my son who's soon to be 12 a sequence of things something similar to go like this go take out the trash after you're done taking out the trash go take your bath he doesn't hear anything that i tell him wow and he forgets and i'll be like why didn't you take out the trash? You never told me that. Son, you looked at me and shook your head and you can't even remember that I told you to take the trash out like 20 minutes ago. Mm. You know, and it, and it infuriates track. me because it's like, I feel like the video games is, I don't know, dumbing them down in a sense. Yep, yep, yep. You know, like growing up, we had video games, but we also had what's called an imagination. Right, right, right. <laughs> and I told my kids, I'd be like, go play your imagination. They look at me like, what? Yeah, what they're is not that? feeling no, it. No, no, like, y'all have to figure life out mm-hmm. without that video game. And so this school year, what we're doing is no video games at all during the week and only on weekends. And that's only if you make the grades. Ooh. So that's what we're doing because, not to brag, but our kids are super smart. You know, they have A+. plus. Um, minds and I feel like that has to come to pass and the only way it's going to come to pass is without the distraction of the video game and the cell phones. The cell phones is the same way. Right, right. Like my son loves basketball but this whole summer where you think he was? In the front of the video game. Wow. And if he's not in front of the video game he has that cell phone to his eyeballs. I mean like glued to his face and he wears eyeglasses. And it's like, you cannot see? Like, why it has to be so close to your face? I mean, like, he's in front of a 50-inch plus television set, standing right in front of it. Girl, yes. Like, you can't sit your behind back on the couch. <laughs> That's ain't nothing but about 5, 10 feet away from the, the, the sofa or the bed or wherever yet. So, so, wait, do they have friends around in the neighborhood? Oh, he have one friend. Okay, one one friend. friend. But most of his friends... On are the in game. China. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> on the video game, you know, I be hearing That's him cutting bad. up and screaming and hollering in the house, and you know, all his friends is on the video game. And when I do punish him from the video game, it's like his whole world is gone. He can't function. It's yeah. like he lost his best friend, his puppy died or something. Like that's 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 how mine is too. Yeah. So yeah, that's video games and cell phones, man. It's a gift and a curse, especially with our kids. And another thing, those cell phones, it teach them how to be antisocial. Mm-hmm. Like we could be like in a family setting or out and about. Let's say we go out to eat, everybody head is down. Right. On a video game, and like you know, like that commercial. When the little boy wanted a grape soda <laughs> and he called his grandma who was sitting in the living room uh-uh. for a grape soda. Uh-uh. On the phone? On the phone. God, no, you lie. And I think he was more closer <laughs> to the grape soda than the grandmother was. And that's how my kids is. Let They'll... me tell you. Hold on, wait. Let me, you laughing, but let me tell you this one. Carmen said, Mommy, come see. I want to show you something. I said, Carmen, I tell you what. 
take my phone, take a picture of it, come back and bring it, my phone. <gasps> then that way I can see what you want. Oh my God. <laughs> what so you wanted you to show like them. me. OMG. Because I, so, I yeah. wasn't about to get up. So yeah, so they be, instead of coming and talk to me and their dad, they text us and we're in the next room. That's bad. That's the way they like they like to communicate. So we're gonna we wanna we wanna we we're not trying to tell y'all what to do. We're just telling y'all what we're going to do. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, encourage maybe some healthy habits. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> I know for me, especially I like to call I like to call it lazy parenting for me. Mm-hmm. I put I give them the phone sometimes when I want a break because mm-hmm. they come with some small talk. Sometimes I don't wanna talk about some of the things that they yeah, want to talk about yeah. so i give them the phone and i tell them look here go so i'm gonna practice not doing that trying yeah. to listen yeah remove and i think them phones and yeah. all that and i think we are all guilty of that at some point you mm-hmm. know because like even like as a baby you know i see, like i used to give mine an ipad right you know at one years old mm-hmm. here go play a game go do this go do that yeah and then at the same time now we fussing at them because they're addicted. Mm-hmm. But it seems from us, we don't want to buy the video right. games. Right, and you know what, too? This is what helped me. This is what helped me. I told myself one day, I said, you know what? That's really sad. I said, you could sit on the phone with your friends and talk about mess, mm-hmm. drama, or whatever's popping at that time. Y'all can sit on the phone for hours and discuss just BS. Mm-hmm. But you can't give your children five to ten minutes. Sometimes you just want to give them a a phone or a game to just hush them up. Mm-hmm. So that that kind of was like a, a little reality yeah. check for me to where I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to give them my undivided attention. Sometimes they need they need us to listen. They need us to talk to them. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. that's what's trending for me, like for, 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 for the both of us is yeah. trying to, you know, minimize. Minimize electronics. Yes, get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, deal. The best selfie of the day is going to go to Trenice Arsenal. Hey, Trenice. And our social hustler of the week, Elena, is going to give it to you. Awesome. My social hustler of the week goes to my good friend and beautician, Quintessa Nicole, y'all. Y'all, she's my beautician, and she was also the first person to show me how to do a donut in fourth grade in band class. Girl, she taught you with the sock? <laughs> yes, she sure did. <laughs> so, and a matter of fact, I still got a donut on right now. <laughs> Speaking of. Speaking of. So, thanks to you, boo. I'm still rocking out a donut all these years later. Um, she specializes in sew-ins, custom wigs, soft styles, hard styles. She does dreads and cuts hair. She can do it all, y'all. So be sure to find her at Beautiful Tresses, located in Karen Crow. And you can find her on Facebook under Quintessa Nicole. And I just want to give her a congratulations because she just had a beautiful baby girl a few months ago. So congratulations to you, boo. And now to add motherhood to the plate of to-dos. She's handling it well. Yes, yes. And our social post of the week is going to go to, I don't want to say his name Xavier? wrong. Xavier? Is it, what's it, what the last name? Is it Ledette or Lede? Ledette? Ledette or Lede. It all depends how he pronounces it. Okay, he's on <laughs> Facebook, and it goes so well with our topic today that I was being goofy about and not serious, <laughs> which I need to start being serious. But it goes well with our topic. It's about trust. Mm-hmm. My trust issue started... <laughs> When my mom <laughs> said, come here, I'm not going to hit you. <laughs> <laughs> that is classic. Because, I mean, even till today, I tell my kids the same thing. Come here, I'm not going to hit you. And as soon as they get by me, Coop pop. Cup. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we need to uh, flip the script on that a little bit. <laughs> well, guys, this is what we want to hear from you. What do you see tr- trending in the 337? What topics do you think we should talk about? And who's your social hustlers of the week? Whether it's business, social media, healthy living, fashion, music, culture, or style. Lend us your opinions so we can talk about it in our up-and-coming shows. Go to our Instagram page at One Lafayette Radio Music Station and drop us your thoughts under our post titled 337 What's Trending. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at One Lafayette Radio Music Station 
And subscribe to our YouTube channel at One Lafayette Radio Music Station to get updated info on what's up and coming. Artists, this is where we want to hear from you. It's your time to shine. We are looking for original music from artists in the 337 and surrounding areas. If you have positive music, meaning no songs talking about killing, shooting, or down-talking females or males, we like to keep it clean and it's a positive show. We want to hear from you. To get your music on our up-and-coming show, please send us an MP3 file. Make sure it's the radio versions with your artist's name, artwork, and social links to One Lafayette Radio Music Station at gmail.com. That's the number one, Lafayette Radio Music Station at gmail.com to be featured on our up-and-coming shows. If your family member or friends has a business doing music or some type of entrepreneur venture, as long as it's legal, moral, or ethical, let us know so we can give them a community support shout-out. I can't stress this enough. Please support, support, support. That's the only way a change is going to happen within our community. Everyone mentioned in today's show will have their names and social links attached at the end of this podcast, so be sure to watch out for that. And now for our tip of the day. Tip of the day, it says, um, don't allow bad relationships to change your character and who you are as a person. Stay true to who you are because the right person is out there and will show up on time. Mm. I'm a testament to that, y'all. That I mean, also went well with our show, <laughs> what we, we discussed. <laughs> I didn't let the rotten apple, you know, spoiled his apple. Mm. And now this apple shining. Mm. <laughs> That's the one. Okay. And now for the quote of the day. Um, be truthful with e- with each other about what you do, think, and feel. Honesty creates trust, and that rings true as well. Yep, because that's how I was able to create trust in my current relationship, and I think that rings true to any type of relationship, mm-hmm. whether it's a friend, whether it's a mother daughter relationship, you know, business relationship, or you know. Marital relationship, honesty creates trust. So always remember that, y'all. Yeah. Well, that concludes episode five of today's show. I hope you enjoyed it. It's been fun. Thanks so much for tuning in to One Life Yet Radio Music Station podcast. Once again, it's your girls, Lane Marie. And Deshi Nicole. Don't forget to cop that SP King James 725 album. If you haven't already, it's available now on all major online stores. Closing us out is King Rice, a song titled Going Back. You can find him on Instagram at KR underscore, I hope I'm saying this right, y'all, Traficante, T-R-A-F-F-I-C-A-N-T-E. Peace, love, and gratitude. I was going to help you with that, but it sounds like I have a a frog in my throat. Okay, so we're going to rewind it. Peace. Love and gratitude. I wasn't going to help you. I was only saying that I was going to help you because it sounded like I have, but it sounded like I have a frog in my throat. <laughs> One laugh yet, we are out. <laughs> <laughs>
If time is what you need, then I'll be patient and supportive. My agenda is to love you. Being happy is the motive. And your beauty, that's a bonus. Shit, it ain't no secret. Your looks caught my attention. Personality determines if you keep it. Cause I'm more in a substance than appearance. Love, loyalty, understanding, and perseverance. I promise to protect and provide and keep it faithful. I'm glad you're open-minded, and for that I'm truly grateful. For real. Hi. 